If you're still with me after that first part, then good for you, because here's where things get interesting. But first, I forgot to mention something in that last part, and that is Marco recommends driving the windings of the coil with pulse DC, alternately driving each winding in opposite directions. Uh, I have trouble seeing how driving the coil with square wave, um, with both windings either in ser series aiding or in parallel, uh, that the practical result would be any different. The only benefit of with using pulse DC is if, is if you have a single power supply, single voltage power supply, and you want to drive uh, the coils alternately with that. Alrighty, moving on to the material of this part. We need to lay down some groundwork to understand what Marco claims is going on with this coil. In this image, you can see I have titled the Virtual Photon Flux. This is part of uh, the, the zero-point energy theory. The zero-point energy theor theory has that there's a high-frequency vibration in empty space. An additional part of that is something called the virtual particle flux. And it's called virtual because these particles just pop into existence out of nowhere, always in pairs, with a, a matter particle paired with an antimatter particle. That's why we have the red and the blue little circles here representing these particles. They pop into existence for such a short amount of time that ordinarily they would move towards each other and annihilate each other, but they don't even have time to move. They pop in and pop back out. They're like knocking on the door of existence, trying to get a foot in the door, but something pushes them back out as fast as they can get a foot in the door. Virtual particle flux. Now, uh, we see here the singularity. The black line around that is the event horizon of a singularity. Very close to the event horizon of a singularity, the conditions are different so that when a virtual particle pair materializes near the event horizon, they can exist, they can fully come into reality. And when they do, instead of moving towards each other and annihilating each other practically instantly as they ordinarily would, the matter, the positive matter photon gets pulled across the event horizon of the singularity and the anti-matter photon is accelerated away from the event horizon due to its nature of uh, being antimatter. Okay, I'm going a little out of order here. I probably should have scripted this. Uh, you know, such is the benefit of hindsight. In any case, Einstein and his buddies back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, one of the consequences of the theory of relativity was singularities, black holes. And they got to thinking that all the matter that flows into a black hole has to go somewhere. It can't just stay there. So they got this idea of a subspace tunnel and all the matter that fell into the black hole would go through this tunnel and pop out of a thing called a white hole somewhere else in the universe. So they started looking for white holes and they couldn't find any. So they salvaged the they salvaged the theory by saying that the white hole was in a parallel universe. So all the matter that goes into a black hole here goes spewing out of a white hole in a parallel universe. And that tunnel between the two universes they call the Einstein-Rosen bridge. Well, I'd like to put a spin on this. 
And my idea is that, yes, all the matter that goes into a black hole, or rather, there is actually a bridge between a parallel universe, but that parallel universe is an antimatter universe. And in that antimatter universe, antimatter gets pulled into the singularity and goes streaming towards, you know, the center of the singularity. Whereas in our our universe, positive matter gets pulled into the black hole and goes streaming towards the singularity. So in effect, we have a matter stream from one side and an antimatter stream from the other side. These two meet and annihilate each other in the matter-antimatter reaction. This releases a lot of energy. Photon it would be radiated as photonic energy. But seeing as this is happening inside of a black hole, that energy cannot escape. Can you see where I'm going with this? Perhaps that energy, that photonic energy, is what is the source of the virtual particle flux. So there's a mechanism at work here that we have yet to figure out where the energy contained inside the singularity between the matter and antimatter universe its outlet is into the virtual particle flux and that's what all that energy there is driving that's what drives the zero point energy field the important thing to notice is nothing is coming directly back out of the singularity the singularity is not radiating on either side of the Einstein-Rosen bridge 